I'm J. Michael Bostwick, and I'm a professor of psychiatry here at the Mayo Clinic, uh, and um, the senior author on this paper, which was written uh, by as a, a first author by a, a Mayo medical student. The second author is also a Mayo medical student. One of the real pleasures of my job is being able to work with talented students who do this work as part of um, their graduation requirements for our medical school. Dr. Chalk, the first author, uh, had won uh, a grant from Alpha Omega Alpha, uh, the Honor Society, to do this work, and she also, um, in the process of completing her MD degree, also completed an MPH degree. Hi, my name is Megan Chalk, and I'm a current first year resident at the Family Medicine Residency Program at Kaiser San Diego. I'm a recent 2015 graduate of Mayo Medical School. Our article, Patterns of Healthcare Usage in the Year Prior to Suicide, a population case-based study, will appear in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in America. An often cited fact is that people who die by suicide have had some kind of contact with the healthcare system in the year prior to death. The seeming implication of this statement is that healthcare providers may have been able to do something to prevent the individual's eventual suicide. Our research rose out of a healthy skepticism of this statement because if everyone is going to the doctor, is it really possible for healthcare providers to intervene and identify individuals at an increased suicide risk? Interestingly, the majority of studies that establish that there has been healthcare usage prior to suicide among suicide decedents do not contain a comparison group. The premise of our research, therefore, was to determine whether there are any distinguishing factors in the type and frequency of healthcare contact that might indicate an increased suicide risk. We defined 86 cases that listed suicide as a cause of death in the death certificate data. We matched each case to three controls for a total of 344 study subjects and assigned all subjects a corresponding death date to their appropriate case. We then reviewed the entire medical record in the year prior to death date our research showed several interesting findings. First, there was no difference in the likelihood of having had any sort of healthcare contact in the year prior, which indicates that the implication that suicide decedents are more likely to have seen any healthcare provider in the prior year is not completely correct. However, we did find that suicide decedents had a higher number of visits in the 12 months, six months, and four weeks prior to their death date. This might indicate that individuals who appear to be using the healthcare system more frequently may be at an increased suicide risk. Cases were more likely to have had a mental health diagnosis, and this was the one factor that we controlled for in our study. Cases were more likely to have spent time in the inpatient setting, both for mental health and non mental health reasons. This corresponds to other studies that have established an increased risk of suicide with a higher number of physical comorbidities. One visit type in particular, emergency department visits for a mental health reason, was only seen in suicide decedents. But in the study, the only people who had mental health emergency room visits were in fact those who eventually died by suicide. So again, to emphasize this point, this fact that we is quoted in all over the place in my experience that uh, somehow going to the doctor is going to be important in uh, uh, distinguishing who will kill themselves simply isn't true. As a primary care physician, my takeaway from our research is that I should ask about suicide risk in patients with certain patterns of healthcare usage. First, anybody with a history of an emergency department visit for a mental health reason. Second, a patient that seems to be interacting with the healthcare system more frequently, and especially for those visits made for a mental health reason, would warrant my, a higher suspicion um, and further inquiry into potential for suicide. It has been shown that simply asking about suicide does not increase individual suicide risk and healthcare providers can provide information about suicide crisis lines that can save lives. 
as electronic medical records become more integrated, I hope that it will become possible to arrange better follow-up for patients and thus, their, thus prevent more suicide deaths. In summary, what I really like about this work is that it takes something that we think we know, um, an assumption, and challenges it. Uh, the literature suggests that the fact that people who kill themselves see a doctor in the year before their visit, uh, before their death, has some intrinsic value or meaning. What we're able to show with this work, uh, this case control study, is that there's no difference in the fact of having seen uh, a doctor in the year prior to death. There is a difference in the quality of those visits. There are more visits for the per people who kill themselves. They're more likely to have psychiatric diagnoses, more likely to have had mental health visits. Interestingly, they're um, not more likely to have had inpatient non-psychiatric visits. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.